Hey, what's up fellow storm preparers? It's Jason. I don't know where you guys are at, but I'm on the East Coast, just north of DC, which is right in the epicenter of the storm that's about to hit. And I wanted to communicate to you a couple ideas I had about how to survive the storm from a fitness perspective. Now, that might be the farthest thing on your mind right now if you're in this area, and it probably is because uh, the people that I've encountered at the grocery stores are going absolutely nuts right now, stocking up on water and everything else. But as long as you've stocked up on water and food and you have 17 backup generators, then you can turn your mind to thinking, well, how can I make the most out of what might be a couple days of being hunkered down in your house in the snow? So I want to address three things, the first of which is don't overeat. And this is a big one because when storms hit and you're inside and you have nothing else to do, the temptation to stuff your face full of all kinds of food is very high and it's usually not the kind of food that is on your meal plan, if you know what I'm saying, okay? The ice cream comes out, the popcorn comes out, the hot chocolate especially comes out. God, it's so good. But be mindful. Just because you're inside due to a storm doesn't mean you have to eat all of the sugar in your house. Stick to your plan. Allow yourself a treat or two. That's okay. Like anything else, in moderation, just be mindful. There's the temptation. As long as you know the temptation's there, you can keep it at bay. Second thing, okay? is you have a lot of time on your hands. You're not going anywhere. You might even lose, you know, God forbid, you might lose internet and then you can't surf the web all day long sitting on the couch under your keister. Take the time to exercise. And whether that's doing a program, uh, like, you know, the programs that, that I do that you might be doing as well that are, you know, you're following along on, uh, on demand or on, on a DVD or doing your own thing or doing something winter related. And guess what? Shoveling snow, by the way, that is a workout. That's a crazy workout. It's a full body workout, legs, back, arms, lungs. I mean, you shovel snow for a couple hours, you're toast, but take the time to work out. It's, uh, you know, it's really nice to sit down and relax and you should, and you know, maybe have a fire going and, uh, and that's, that's, that's a necessary part of life, but as long as you're home, you might as well exercise also. So keep that in mind. The third thing, which goes along with this one, like I'm kind of linking them together, is make sure you stretch. And this is actually really, really related to, um, to the act of snow shoveling, because a lot of us go out there and we start throwing snow around and we do it for a couple hours and we feel awesome about ourselves. We got this great workout and then, uh, you know, we just go and plop down. And the problem with that is that is, is all your muscles are in snow shovel mode and then you don't do anything after that and they just they just seize up, they just tighten up. And then that's when you get the, oh, the back, the back pain, it's killing me, all oh, my arms, my shoulders. So uh, especially for those folks who are out there doing the snow shoveling, stretch. Take time afterward and stretch. Do a nice long, you know, you know, 10, 20 minute, 30 minute, whatever, whatever suits you stretch routine. It will alleviate some of that pain that's associated with shoveling snow. And of course, you know, do it no matter what kind of workout you do, but just make sure you take time to stretch it all out. Those are my three tips for surviving the storm from a fitness perspective. Be safe, have fun, and uh, see you on the other side. Bye, guys.